from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, April the 21st, 2021. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu once again called for direct elections to try and break the current political deadlock in Israel. Efforts on Netanyahu's behalf to try and gather enough support to form a coalition have not yielded any promising results as of yet. And he said yesterday there is a solution to the deadlock, and it is a direct election for the prime minister to let the public decide who will lead the country. Netanyahu has until May the 4th to try and form a government. If he fails to do so, Israel's president, Reuven Rivlin, would need to give another candidate that task or send the mandate back to the Knesset for it to choose a member to try and do so. This evening, Yamina party leader Naftali Bennett addressed the press, stressing that he would do everything in his power to avoid another round of elections in Israel. He said that if Netanyahu cannot form a coalition in time, he will work to build a national unity government. Bennett said that his first preference would be for a right-wing government to be formed, but if not, the second preference is for a national unity government, which would likely mean, the media says, one with Yeshatid Yair Lapid. But Bennett stressed that he would only join a unity government if it is good and stable and allows him, he said, to safeguard my values and worldview. Israel's Air Force is taking part in an international aerial exercise this week in Greece, one of seven countries joining the INIOHOS drill alongside the United States, France, Spain, Canada, Cyprus, and the United Arab Emirates. The IDF said together forces will simulate combating threats above enemy territory to strengthen strategic international ties and increase readiness for a wide range of scenarios, calling the exercise an important milestone in the strategic international cooperations between the Israeli Air Force and the different countries through strengthening shared interests. The exercise, which began Sunday, runs through this Friday. The IDF also shared that Israel's commander of the Israeli ground forces, Major General Yoel Strick, began his visit this week to the U.S. Army headquarters in Washington, meeting with U.S. Chief of Staff General James C. McConville, where the two discussed future strategic cooperation. The IDF tweeted, our partnership is as strong as ever. Democratic Congresswoman Betty McCollum introduced a bill last week that would condition U.S. aid to Israel, prohibiting aid that goes towards any Israeli activity in the West Bank. The Jewish Insider reported that in a letter to colleagues to support the bill, McCollum claimed that Israel is committing flagrant violations of human rights against Palestinians. The American Israel Public Affairs Committee, APAC, shared its outrage, saying that the U.S. State and Defense Departments know and ensure that American security assistance to Israel is used only for legitimate self-defense and internal security. Let's call the McCollum bill what it is, APAC tweeted, a baseless libel against Israel and U.S. officials managing our aid program. They called on the public to sign a bipartisan letter from Representatives Ted Deutsch and Michael McCall, reinforcing the bipartisan consensus that aid to Israel serves American interests. APAC tweeted, a strong Israel advances our interests. The Jewish state is a key pillar of America's regional security framework. Weakening Israel weakens America. And staying with the pro-Israel lobby, APAC lauded the introduction of the bipartisan-led U.S.-Israel Cybersecurity Cooperation Enhancement Act introduced Monday. APAC tweeted, as Americans and Israelis face mounting cyber attacks from adversaries like Iran, this cooperation will keep both countries safer. 
The bill would create a $30 million grant program for cybersecurity research and development and collaboration between the U.S. and Israel. It is led by Senators Susan Collins, Sheldon Whitehouse, Todd Young and Jackie Rosen, and Representatives Andrew Garabino and Jim Langvin who is also co-chair of the Congressional Cybersecurity Caucus. Langvin said this bill will devote resources towards strengthening our cybersecurity partnership with our staunch ally Israel and yield valuable solutions to help keep Americans safe in cyberspace. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, April the 21st at 7 o'clock, Holocaust survivor Barbara Fishman Traub recounts her time in Auschwitz and her ultimate liberation in parts three and four of her story on Witness. At eight, a panel of experts discuss how the climate crisis will affect the hot and dry climate of Israel in the coming decades. That's from a program of the JCPA, the Israel Consulate of New York, and Chazon. And with the recent release of season three of the beloved Israeli show on Netflix, Shtisel, we replay Mark Golub's sit-down with the show's stars, Michael Aloni, Dov Glickman, and Netta Riskin on L'Chaim. At 10.30, it's the film Wrestling Jerusalem in the spotlight on new Jewish cinema. And coming up next, it's Thinking Out Loud with Micah Halpern. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, April the 21st, 2021. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy. Stay well. <laughs>